Hi everybody, Tara Gigi here. Um, yes, I'm back. I've been really busy. I've had some health issues as well, so I'm going to go into that. But just as an update, last time I talked to you was about a month ago and my in-laws were coming to visit and we had a great time, really good time. And then a week went by and then two of my good friends came to visit and that was amazing. We had a really good time. And I'm back at the apartment for a little bit and next week I'm going to Houston, not Houston. I'm going to Austin. I'm flying over there to visit my parents for a little bit. in between I want to do a couple videos while I have time and I kind of wanted to share with you okay at the beginning of this year I told you that my theme was going to be simplicity I'm going to get a little bit into that and I also told you that I was going to do a countdown to 60 and once I turned 59 and I was so excited about it and everything and then in the past month things have just been happening and um, let me get into it okay but today's video is going to be about counting down health-wise. Um, uh, as I approach 60, I was really planning to focus on my health, but I can promise you that if nothing had gone wrong or happened to me, I, that would still be, you know, just part of my life, not something that was ultra important. Be only because I've always been really, really healthy and um, I never go to the doctor because I never have reason to other than my shoulder thing. Remember last year, two years ago, I had that shoulder thing. That was major. Gosh, I don't even know where to start. Um, I'll just start with what's been happening to me lately and how I have responded to it. I've not been feeling myself. I did a video a while back and said I was feeling kind of off and kind of weird and I thought it was because of this certain decision that's gotten I needed to make and I'm still going to do a video on that decision and how we came up with it. But um, as soon as we made that decision, I felt better, but now I'm back to feeling that same weird way of just feeling um, directionless and kind of aimless, and that is not like me at all because I am a project person, I'm a go-getter, I'm always ready to tackle the next project. That's just how I function best in life. I do not function well if I sit and think about myself. No, 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 no. That's a bad thing to do in my life. I was feeling kind of off, but I didn't think it had to do with anything but just my emotions or the thing that might have happened that day or something. But it wasn't like that. It was more of a long, drawn-out feeling of aimless dread. And I hated it. I hated it, and I couldn't figure out how to get out of it. The other thing that happened in the meantime is kind of the first thing that set this off, but it, but it made me realize a lot of other things, is one day, um, gosh, it's probably been about two months ago, I was brushing my hair and I felt this big um, spot on my head, like right in the middle of the top of my head, in my part, there was this bump. It was about the size of a pencil eraser, but not quite that high. Probably about half as high as a brand new pencil eraser. Um, but it was hard, like a rock. And I felt it, I thought, that's so weird. Oh my God, am I getting a wart on top of my head, you know? <laughs> so I just kind of thought, well, let me just see if it goes away. And it didn't go away, it didn't go away, it didn't go away. Well then, one of my friends, I told one of my friends about it, and she said, you need to get that checked. I went to a dermatologist in Pensacola, Florida, which is near my home, and she looked at it and she said, I need to take that off and get a biopsy. I'm like, oh my God, what? She said, yeah, I need to take that off. So she deadened it. She took it off. When I left, I felt the top of my head. It was totally gone. I was like, wow. Well, that was easy. I get a call like the next day or maybe two days, and uh, it was cancer. 
skin cancer right on top of my head. So bizarre. And I said, oh, well, I'm so glad that she got it off. And the girl goes, oh no, you have to come back for surgery. Long story short, I had to go back in. This was like two weeks ago, three, two and a half weeks ago, right after my in-laws left. They left on a Tuesday. I went and did the surgery on a, the next day. They cut this big spot in my head, like she said it was the shape of a football, not that big, like that, and got it out and then stretched the skin back over and sewed it back up and I had stitches for two weeks. It wasn't the kind that dissolved. She said, I asked her, I said, why didn't you put the kind that dissolved? And she goes, those are inside your head. These that have to stay in two weeks are on the top of your head. So I had these black pieces of stitches on my head. But they, for some odd reason, they didn't have to peel any, they didn't have to shave it or none of my hair's gone. More on that in a minute. But I have this big dip in my head now. Uh, but let me just say, the reason I haven't been doing videos is that surgery kicked my butt. It was difficult. It was painful afterwards for many days to the point that she had just said, take extra strength Tylenol. And I dug through my medicine cabinet in a, on about day three, and I found an old bottle of pills that I had, I think, for my shoulder. And it just said, take twice daily for pain. I took whatever that was. Actually, I did look it up because I don't usually do that. I looked it up, and it was extra strength ibuprofen. I don't even know what that is, but that worked. That helped me a lot. So... I got that done and everything, and in the meantime, for about the past three or four months, I have felt like my hair is falling out, big time. And I didn't know why this was happening, so when I went to the dermatologist the first time, she looked at my head and everything, and she said, well, you could try these pills, and I will give you the link to them. Yeah, I got them on Amazon, and so I'm in the middle of taking these pills. Well, as all that's going on, my hair's falling out. I, I wrote down my symptoms in case any of y'all know what's wrong with me. <laughs> my skin has gotten really dry and really itchy. Um, my hair's definitely falling out. My hairdresser, the last time I went, said I had dandruff. I've never had dandruff in my life. So obviously my scalp is really dry and it's itchy. Um, my fingernails will not grow. I just feel like everything's falling apart. I don't feel right. I'm having all these weird things. Oh, I got a cold sore. I've gotten two cold sores in the past, like, hmm, three or four months. Never had one before. So I felt, I, be I was beginning to feel like my immune system was suppressed somehow. So I don't know if that's it or not, but, um, I'm doing a lot of research. Also, I've been breaking out in hives. <laughs> I don't know. I've got serious, serious brain fog. Like yesterday, I could not think of the name of the movie Hope Floats. I've said the word Hope Floats a thousand times, but I could not think of the word, the name of the movie. Now I'm doing this all the time. I can't think of things like this morning. I couldn't think of Nat King Cole. I couldn't think of his name. I can picture him. I know who he is. I couldn't think of his name. This is happening over and over and over. Suddenly. It's not, this is not something that I've been doing uh, coming on for years. This has been a sudden thing. So I feel like something's going on with me internally. I don't think all of this is old age or getting older because it feels more sudden than that. Usually if you're getting old, things gradually I would think things would gradually come upon you, but this was like sudden. So I've done a lot of research and most of my, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. So the way I am, I need to get a normal, regular checkup. It has been, I'm not going to tell you how many years, but I, like I said, I'm always healthy, so I don't go to the doctor. So I need to have a regular checkup and um, go from there. But most of my symptoms uh, point to maybe a thyroid issue. Then um, my dermatologist agreed to send me to a lab for a thyroid check, and it came back normal. But then I read if you've been taking supplements, I've been taking the hair supplements that can give you a false okay on your thyroid. 
don't ask me, I'm not a doctor, but so how am I going to deal with this as I get older in my countdown to 60? <laughs> I've been doing a lot of research and my advice to you is be careful when you do research online. Be careful of the source of where your information is coming from, you know. But my thing is keep it simple. So the way I'm keeping it simple is I'm doing my research. Like this morning, I was ready to take. I was ready to get all the stuff. My hair is probably the worst part of this situation. I can't hardly make a bun anymore. Like I used to make a big bun on top of my head. I mean, y'all, that was six months ago. I could, I can barely keep a ponytail in because it's just thin. Yesterday, it was so dull looking. Even Scott said, it looked like I had sprayed tons of dry shampoo on my head. And you know it dulls your hair, dry shampoo does, even if you brush through it, it dulls your hair. That's what my hair looked like. So my hair is so unhealthy. So because, and it's like straw. And when I wake up in the mornings, it's all, it's all stuck up on one side. It's not, it's just not acting normal. <laughs> it's not. So I don't think that's a sudden old age thing that your hair is like straw and it's falling out. So I started looking all this stuff up. So it said the things I needed, you know, to strengthen my hair. Oh, and I did a deep condition. I went right to the store, got a deep conditioner, and I did it last night. And it did make a difference in the shine of my hair. So um, I also read this morning I needed to take, um, let's see, it was zinc, fish oil, um, something else, and then collagen, and then iron. And so I was ready to pack my Amazon cart with all that stuff. But you know, there's 8,000 places to order supplements from. You have to be careful. Then I read the one supplement that I am on and it had everything already in it except the collagen. So now I'm going to get just collagen. My mom has been taking it and she says it's done wonders for her hair. But again, she's 20 years older than me at this rate. Seriously, at this rate, my hair is going to be gone. I, I don't know. So, I don't know. Can you believe I'm telling you all this? I want to go on Mary Ellen's channel. She's on YouTube. I think it's Mary Ellen After 60. Is that right? Mary Ellen After 60. Anyway, you know who she is. She did this whole series, and she had these blobs of hair. Oh, I don't remember what she said. I don't remember what video she did. She did a video where she gave, like, the, the analysis. So, I need to go back and watch that whole series. But um, another thing I want to do besides the supplement and deep conditioning and taking and, and, and being more gentle on my hair, I also found a brand new silk pillowcase, well it was satin, satin pillowcase in my closet. And so I got that out last night to sleep on because that's more gentle on your hair. And I also want to eat a lot of healthy fats. I already eat avocados and nuts. And what are some of the other things I've already be have begun eating? So I'm going to continue with that and add some more healthy fats to my diet. Water is one thing I know I'm, I'm lacking. Someday I do really good for a while and then I just kind of forget. So drinking a lot of water is going to help everything. Here is the biggest reason your hair can fall out. Not, maybe not the number one reason, but it's on every piece of literature I've read, and that is stress. Cortisol that you produce from stress can make everything in your system go wacko. So here is my, um, this part of the video is going to be my, see I can't think of the name of my series that was on, it, that was on Bible study and everything. This is my biblical part of this. I've been, um, the thing about stress for me is when I'm going through high amounts of stress, I can still function and I can function pretty well. And I can delay the stress or delay thinking and focusing on it for a time. And sometimes I wonder if all the stress I had a few years ago, now that everything's quiet and calm and kind of, normal again I feel that stress coming and saying okay now we're gonna discuss it <laughs> or something I don't know um, so what I've come to learn today today 
today. That's what motivated me too to do this video. Is I was doing my Bible study. Okay, I'm gonna have to find it. Hold on one second. Okay, y'all, there's that verse. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you where the burden is light. And I've never understood that verse. And I thought sometimes I think I understand it, and then I go through a time and I'm thinking, that's not what that means, blah, blah, blah. Today, uh, something occurred to me as I was, I drew out this yoke, because, you know, it's an old oxen thing. And so what I kind of think it means now is Jesus is on this side of the yoke or the thing. I don't know which thing is called the yoke, but Jesus is on this side and I'm on this side. We're carrying the load together. But, okay, my camera just cut off, so I took that opportunity to grab the Bible and, and read it. It says, um, come to, Jesus is talking, and the name of the kind of paragraph, I guess, that man named it, not Jesus. It says, rest for the weary. And it says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I'm just always been baffled by what does that mean? What does that mean? My yoke? Whose yoke? Where, where's the yoke? Are there two yokes? What's happening? So, and you're probably going, girl, I already know what that means. Um, so in this time of thinking, is this stress? Is cortisol ram rummaging in my system and screwing everything up? If that's the case, I have to fix that. I can't take a pill for that. I mean, you can take a pill, I guess, to de-stress, but I don't, that doesn't feel like what I need to do. I think it's deeper than a pill, because a pill can fix it for a time, and then when the pill wears off, you've got it again. Anyway, nothing wrong against, nothing against taking something for big stress. I'm all for that, for sure, but just doesn't feel like that's what I'm supposed to do. Now, at a later time, I may change my mind, and I can't believe I'm getting quite this personal with y'all, but you know, only a few ladies watch my videos, so I'm not not like I'm telling the world. But um, anyway, it's you have this this thing and these little things that are on you, and what I think it's come to mean. It says um, there is still a yoke or a burden to carry. We all have burdens. You can't deny that. Everybody has burdens. So. We still have a burden to carry, but it's light. Now, what makes it light? How can I make my burdens light? Because if I line them up, the people that I care about and the things they're going through, it's not light. It's not light at all. It's really very heavy. I think what it means is virtually this. Okay, you're on this thing with Jesus, but Jesus should have the control. You have to give up a sense of control or wanting to control the situation even for good because we all want good no one wants to make the situation worse you want to do it for good but that's the burden is light because you have to give that up it's burdensome sometimes to to have to put it all and, and say okay i trust you i trust you i trust you that feels almost like a burden but it's not because you're letting it go is my point you're letting it go so my part in these yokes is I trust he carries the weight. So that's what makes my side light is because I have to fully trust him. And that's the trick. Fully trust him, giving it to him every day, sometimes many times a day. So I don't know if that made any sense, but it does help me to realize that I have to, rem if I have to, I have, to have joy and I have to remember that a, I can't control it anyway, so it's a, it's just dumb to try. But I can pray and I can trust and I can give it all to Him. I do think I should get a gold star for getting through it in the first place. But now I want to get a gold star in trusting Jesus even more than yesterday, last year, five years ago. Trust, trust, trust. That's what it's all about is trusting Him. So even though I'm researching. Um, why my hair is falling out and all these different things that are happening and I'm getting older. I have to trust God with that. Even my hair. 
I trust you, Jesus, to take care of my hair. And if you don't want me to have hair, I'm just going to have to trust you with that and figure out a game plan. And, you know, he'll be there in that too. And I don't mean to make light of losing your hair. It's not light. But I don't mean this to sound like um, I'm not losing it from chemotherapy, which is a whole nother deal and 20 million times worse. But it's, but, but still it's, it's upsetting and annoying in its own way um, to try to figure out what's going on. The other thing I think is accepting. This is a big one too. A lot of times we go through something and we think, oh my gosh, I got through that. The rest of my life surely will be perfect because who could go through more than that? And then you go through something else and something else and something else. And I, my problem is I continue to be surprised. I continue to be surprised when something new happens that's not necessarily good. And I think accepting that stress will always be there, things will always happen, I think that's a big, would be a big help too. It's just acceptance. This is just the way it is. People will lose jobs. People will hurt your feelings. People will do things wrong. People will disappoint you. It's just part of life. And I think a lot of just accepting that too is, is good. One more thing, I know this is a long video, but I wanted to read you this quote I saw online the other day. Um, it was in a thread of someone's video and it was five years ago. I can't remember now what the video was that I was watching two or three days ago. I think this is really kind of a cool quote. Uh, multi-layered so um, if you want I can copy and paste it I, I'll just go ahead and copy and paste it into the bottom into the what's it called description box okay this is what Brian Jacobs said it's really just about maintaining a young spirit and not allowing the trials and tribulations of everyday life to age you to tire you to make you feel old our bodies mature as we get older, and so do our minds. But the key to youthful aging is maintaining the aspects of what made you happy in youth while adhering to a conservativeness and making decisions going forward based upon personal wisdom and empirical knowledge. Empirical knowledge, I had to look it up. It just means things that you can observe as truth right in front of you. You can observe it. It's not some... Um, theory is something that as you've gotten older you've observed these things so maintaining a young spirit by not allowing the trials and tribulations to age you that's really what's important is maintaining that youthful spirit and the other part that I really liked is when he said now I can't get back to it okay um, the key, to full youthful, is, the key to youthful aging is maintaining the aspects of what made you happy in youth. And I love that. I mean, nothing makes, well, I won't say nothing, but nothing makes me happier than turning on, you know, Yellow, Good Friday, Yellow Brick Road, or Benny and the Jets, and listening to my old music. That's what made me happy as a youth that still makes me happy today. I don't forget to do that a lot. I don't forget because A, it takes you back. B, it makes you feel young. C, it's still great music. Or why, that's why I watch old TV shows. My memory of sitting getting home from school we got home late on the bus we didn't get home till like four and um, now this is when I wasn't a little kid this was like junior high and high school and coming in and getting a bowl full of chips ahoy and a big glass of milk and dipping I never drank the milk because I hate milk dipping and eating the chips ahoy and watching Gilligan's Island or any other rerun that was when I felt safe and happy and protected and like nothing in the world would ever go wrong. I had a good childhood. So when I watch my old shows or like I have Andy Griffith going on in the background, that's what he's talking about, I think. Remembering what made you happy as a youth and keep doing that. Keep doing that because it's, your life is just this big story with so many facets. And you sometimes have to go back in the story and say, that was really rotten. That was really good. And I think I want to do more of that, you know. So I totally understand that this video has been all over the map. And I told you I had brain fog. So that's my excuse. 
My camera has turned off four times, so that means I need to end this video. I don't remember when I was saying what I was saying when that just happened. But yes, this video has been all over a map, the map. I apologize. I hope you'll comment. If you think you know what's wrong with me, please email me at terrygg at yahoo.com. Give me some tips, and um, I'll keep you posted. And next video, I promise, will be more fun. Bye.